It covers 75% of the Earth's surface. There is no new source of water. Every drop that exists today was in existence at the Earth's creation. It is the essential source of life to every creature and species. It displayed the glory of God in the dawn of time when the Spirit of God hovered over the deep. It cleansed the earth when it burst from the heavens and the depths of the earth during the flood. It brought healing at the pools of Bethesda when the angels of the Lord came to trouble it. It demonstrated Christ's power when he transformed it into wine. It revealed Christ's ministry when he was baptized by John. It demonstrated Christ's servanthood when he washed his disciples' feet. It announced Christ's crucifixion when it washed Pilate's hands. It certified Christ's death when it poured from his side. Now it symbolizes new life in Christ available to all mankind. For we are buried with him through baptism into death and in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see everyone this morning. Were you all excited when you come in and saw that all the people were out there talking and fellowshipping beforehand and uh, had a little extra added bonus if you are a, uh, a, a drinker of the proper kind? How's that? <laughs> Coffee, water, tea, hot chocolate. I saw some juice out there. It's great. So well, we do want to welcome you here. If you've never um, joined our service with before, if you've not joined us in person especially, we welcome you here today. We're glad you are with us. Um, if you are a regular and you have not been here at 7 o'clock on the last two Mondays, um, you're two weeks behind on your, your Easter choir practice, okay? So uh, if you signed up and there were a bunch of you that signed up, make sure you show up at 7 o'clock. Um, they've been practicing and uh, you can join right in where you are. It will be great. Uh, I've lost my notes already, so I don't have a clue what the end rest of the announcements are. So I just went to this huge seminar, and the lady did the same thing, though, so I don't feel too bad. Um, when you came in this morning, you should have gotten a, a Connect card. Um, our screen tells us they're blue Connect cards, but uh, actually they're not. They're Manila. But uh, there's a pretty cool font on there. There's a place on there you can take notes if there's something that's... Uh, meaningful you, for you. There's a place actually at the end of the service where you'll have an opportunity to respond to a question that we've been, been asking people quite some time, and today's is uh, maybe worded a little differently. But you also, we have a QR code. It's a couple places around the building, and the new addition for today happens to be that on the back of your chairs, if you haven't seen those, they're not on the back of every chair. We were trying it out to see what, what worked best. But you'll see there's three QR codes, and they're color-coded. How, how awesome is that? But you'll see that one is for the Connect card. So if you don't have a pen, you don't want to take the opportunity, just point your camera at it. A little menu thing will come up, point, fill it out. There's also one on there that will link you to our website. So if you've been trying to find our website, have had a hard time doing it, there you are. Same thing. And then there's also one for our Give app. So if you um, are one that likes to, to pay your bills online, if you're one that likes to do your donating online, we have made it super easy for you. Just follow the prompts from there, and uh, you'll be able to do that. So that's a new addition in, uh, in addition to our, our little coffee bar out there. So um, we hope that you enjoyed that, and uh, we look forward to maybe doing things like that every week. Uh, to welcome those that are coming into to our sanctuary. There has been a sign-up sheet out on the board for quite some time. It's called Go22. And uh, there's a pastor from Zephyr Hills who said, you know, we have all of these seminars and, and, and trainings and everything for pastors, 
But I've heard from a lot of the lay ministry people that there's nothing really specifically for us. So it has been his dream this year to create a conference for, for lay ministry people. That would be anybody who doesn't consider ministry their professional vocation. But if you're in ministry, if you'd like to know more about how to minister and, and where you're at, this conference is actually for you. Unfortunately, it's too small for me to see the price, but it had something to do with the scripture on it, if I remember. So I think it might be like $28.19, which includes lunch. But there's a sign-up sheet out there. If you're interested, I will make sure you get more information. Um, or there is a website you can go and visit, and I believe you can register right there. We just wanted to make sure you had the opportunity that you knew about it. Um, and if you wanted more information, you would be able to do that. So um, please do that. There's also a sign-up sheet for our April uh, Saturday ladies' breakfast out there. And um, so just sort of take a, a look when you go out. We've got a vision board, some of the stuff that's going on. Uh, the Connect card has a lot of calendar events. So we want you, we're trying as hard as we can to let you know all the opportunities that you have um, to be a part of our family because uh, we don't, this just isn't uh, our church for those of us who come here. It is the church um, of, of God who is reaching out and asking you to join in. So as part of that, I want to welcome you at this point. If you would stand up, if you're able, we're going to go ahead and uh, worship in song now. All right. Good morning. I want to script. Uh, good morning. Y'all just had some good coffee. I know that it has woken you up yeah, and wake you up. are ready to be in the presence of the Lord. I want to share scripture for with you out of Psalms 23, 5 and 6. It says, you prepared a feast for me in the presence of all my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Are you living in the house of the Lord? Let's worship him this morning. Sing it out. Come all ye weary, come all ye thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry drink of the water come and thirst no more come all you sinners come find his mercy come to the table he will satisfy taste of his goodness find what you're looking for Sing, for God so loved, for God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down the foot of the cross Jesus is waiting there with open arms for God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever freedom for God so loved God so loved the world praise God praise God from whom all blessings flow praise him praise him for the wonders of his love come on guys praise God Praise God, praise God, from whom 
the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever the power of hell forever defeated now it is well i'm walking in freedom for god so God so loved the world. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. God so loved the world. Amen. Look to your neighbor and said, God loves you. It's good news, isn't it? Amen. God loves us. How about a little applause for Paige joining us this morning? Yes, and thank she you, awesome? Paige. <laughs> thank you, Paige. Pray with me, please. Father God, we come to you, Lord, because you are the answer. Mm. You're all that we need. Everything, big, small, doesn't matter. And Father, we come with humble hearts because you are God. Because you can answer here. You pay attention. Love. You're the best father we can ever even imagine. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I thank you for this time that we're together, that we have this corporate prayer. We have corporate singing and praising and worship of who you are. Touch our hearts, Lord. Change who we are. Change who we are, God. Transform us by the power of your Holy Spirit to what you want us to be. Enlighten us, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for blessing this service, for blessing Pastor Barbie as she brings the message, mm. for blessing the team as we sing and the band as they play and everything that is done, God, as we greet one another, Lord that your presence be felt, that we know you're here because there's nothing, nothing like the presence of God. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught Unending 
guys sing that again this morning. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. shall soon dissolve like snow the sun forbear to shine but God who called me here below will be forever mine why there wasn't words for that song is because it wasn't a prepared thing we just this morning the spirit was just moving in this place and we felt like we needed to do that song don't we need Jesus every hour of every day the enemy is trying to steal our joy he's trying to capture souls don't you wish Jesus would just come sit down at the table with you and drink a cup of coffee and say this is what we're gonna do today Do you ever just say, Satan is just trying to steal my joy this morning, Lord? Well, I can give you a promise. I know what he's answering. He's already been defeated. Amen. We, he has already given us the victory. Amen. Yes. And so as we sing Refiner this morning, it's a new song. You might not know it. But I want you to listen to the words of this song. And it's just, you've already been defeated. Just lay it down at the Lord's feet. Let him fill you this morning. Let him lead you, direct you. Let him set a fire in your soul this morning. Let's worship. If the altar's where you meet us, take me there, take me there. If what you need is just an offering, it's right here, my life is here, and I'll be a living sacrifice for you. You're a fire, the refiner. I want to be consumed. I want to be tried by fire, purified. You take what If your glory wants to come here, let it fall. We want it all. Lord, your fire is consuming. Fill this place, set it ablaze, and I'll be a living sacrifice for you. You're a fire, 
the refiner. I want to be consumed. Come on, sing it out. I want to be tried by fire. Purify. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. I want to be tried by fire. Purify. You take whatever you Lord, here's my life. Now, this is your prayer this morning. So clean my hands, purify my heart. I want to burn for you, holy for you. Take my life as a sacrifice. You're a fire, the refiner. I want to be consumed. Do you want to be consumed? Sing it again. You're a fire, the refiner. I want to be consumed. Let's just sing it. You're a fire, the refiner. I want to be consumed. I want to be tried by fire. Come on. Purify. You take whatever you desire. Whatever you desire, Lord. Lord, here's my life. I want to be tried by fire. Purify. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my You know it's okay. You can give him a hand clap and praise anytime you want to. I believe when you do it on your own, that's the Holy Spirit. When you do it when you're prompted, that's because someone's telling you to. So if you're like me, there's a little bit of rebellion in there. You don't want to do it then. If you can sit, sit. <laughs> if you feel like to make that gesture of sacrifice, you need to come forward to pray. Feel free. If you want to kneel where you're at. Um, Summer said it, you know, sometimes it's just like Jesus is so close. You feel like you're just sitting with him. And that's an awesome posture to be in when we go before him in prayer. But that song, as we sang that, it, I was here for Thursday night practice and it we went through it a couple times then, and they did it this morning, and then we had some trouble with the song. And you know, I thought when we sang it here as a collective force, I thought, wow, you know, Satan was trying to block that message, but he is defeated, and he wasn't able, and we got the message. At least it was presented. I would ask you, as we go in prayer now, accept that challenge 
Do you want to be a living sacrifice for him? Do you want to be purified? Do you want your hearts to be emptied of self so that he can fill them? If so, use this prayer as a time to speak to him. Don't worry about the words I'm saying. Have your conversation with him, okay? Oh, Father, to be refined by you, we know what that entails sometimes. Sometimes it's a, a physical pain that we don't want to deal with. Sometimes it's a mental anguish that's just overbearing. Sometimes it's an emotional hurt that we feel is just going to rip our hearts out. But we are so, so, so very thankful for your presence with us that fills us and keeps us through those times. For your presence that says, I want more for you than this moment that you're living in right now. For your Holy Spirit that says, you know, you follow me and I have great things in store for you. The plans you have for us are not to harm us. They're not to break us down. They're not to keep us defeated. They are that we would be prosperous in all that you put before us. That we would not miss an opportunity to worship and praise you in the midst of the storm in which we stand. We thank you for your refining fire because that is what makes us pure and holy before you. It's not our actions. It's not the things that we say. It's not even the tasks that we do. It's our heart laid before you so that you can do with it what you have always desired to do. First and foremost, to restore that relationship that was broken and then to fill us from power from on high that keeps us in that place that makes us most useful, that place where we can celebrate you in the midst of the tragedy, that we can look forward to triumph because we look at you. We see glory all around us. And somehow, the trials of the world, the chaos that distracts us, it all fades away. And we just stand in awe in your presence. Oh, Lord, that's where we want to be. That's where we want to be right now is we hold our spiritual cups out to you. And we ask heartily that you would fill them full and over flowing so much so that our cups can't hold it our buildings can't hold it our homes can't hold it that you would be expanded that your kingdom would be expanded and that everyone who sees us sees you in us and are encouraged to be that light in the world just as you were that example for us oh lord thank you today for your presence now we ask that you would keep our ears open, keep our hearts ready, that we would continue to hear you speak through your word. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Been walking to a city I cannot see. Through the valley where the sun can't reach I've been high, I've been low I've been looking for the river that could fill my soul Been walking to a city I cannot see
Amen. All right. So, for those of you who have been here before, you know that anytime I speak, I come with a disclaimer. Today's going to be a little bit different. Am I in the middle for the people online? Okay. All right. Just, just to be sure. So, um, how about this morning for, uh, for Cole Daly and his team? What do you think? Did they do a good job? And there you go. Yeah. It's always good to celebrate our appreciation for others, right? So we've, we've got a tech person back there doing that. So, um, well, today's not any different, and I don't ever want to disappoint people. So today will be a little bit different. Okay, <laughs> so, um, and if you already participated this morning, and in other words, if you came early, had a cup of coffee, even if you couldn't find a, a seat and sit around, even if you weren't here all morning, you know, you just came for a little bit, um, you got a little bit of an experience of what I call an object lesson. And uh, actually, that's the little different part today. That's why I have this concoction up here this morning. It's going to be an object lesson for you. And in case you have not caught on yet, the question of the day is, are you thirsty? That's the question of the day, right? So um, the answer to that question, though, might mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, and usually, I know for me at least, if I'm thirsty, I get up and get a drink, right? Satisfies you, that's it, right? But maybe to you, am I thirsty means I gotta drive by McDonald's, get into the drive through and get me one of those giant, large, iced sweet teas, right? Those, those that just, you know, if I like little ice, that way I get more tea. Just enough ice so it stays cold, but you know, that's, that's the idea. But for some other people, are you thirsty might mean I'm going to go and I'm going to go to the refrigerator and I'm going to reach in and I'm going to get a nice bottle of soda and I'm going to twist that cap off and take a big gulp. <sighs> That's it. That's it, right? Um, that should do it. But did you know? that when you're thirsty and you think you've quenched your thirst, it never quite works forever, right? You get thirsty again. Um, and at some point, we have to realize that maybe that thirst is more than just a physical need. Because if we have this physical need that keeps coming back and back again, Maybe we can look at thirst from a spiritual standpoint. Makes sense? We're in church, right? Makes sense. The dictionary actually says, when you look up thirsty, it says having or showing a strong desire for something. It means you're eager. Hmm. So if we take that definition, it doesn't say anything about water, tea, soda. It says a strong desire for something. Hmm. Maybe it means something different. If we look at it like that, maybe it's not the question of what will satisfy my thirst, but how will my thirst be satisfied? So, I spent a lot of time, if you were here for prayer before we started service, you know this, this I don't even know how long, it feels like it's been a long time. Um, I've been wrestling with this question for myself. Uh, am I thirsty? Am I thirsty? And I was actually led to Isaiah 55, which is, I'm not sure which came first, the song or Isaiah 55. But yesterday, Ed and I are driving down the road, and we're listening to this song, and, and I had to Google it. Said, Is this Isaiah 55? Is he, did he write this? And I, it just, nothing spiritual like that. It's actually not even his song. Somebody else wrote it, and he heard it and picked it up and changed it. And I'm like, well, that was quite disappointing. <laughs> it, 
would have been much more God if, it's, if it was right off of Isaiah 55, right? But I read Isaiah 55 in a bunch of different translations. And um, I guess I need to tell you that the reason why I read it in so many different translations is at one point in one of our churches, we did an Isaiah study that felt like it went on for years. I don't know. It was, by the end of Isaiah, I'm like, are we even learning anything? Why, you know? So, um, so when God gave me Isaiah 55, I thought, hmm. So I had to read and read and read. What are you trying to tell me about being thirsty? And I found, I don't, it's, it's new, 2018, to me that's fairly new. Um, it's called a Easy English Bible. And uh, I researched it so I wouldn't be sending you some, some information that's not acceptable. And it, it sounds like it's a pretty good version to read as we, we want to hear what God's speaking to us. And um, I saw, when I opened it, I saw right there, you know, it's one of those Bibles that have headers. And right there at the top of the page, Isaiah 55, it says, Come to the Lord. I thought, boom, there's my answer. Am I thirsty? Come to the Lord. Well, that's too short. I have to have something more than that, God. But I could have stopped right there because it was the answer for everything. But I did. You know, I thought, oh, that's too, too simple, right? Because we like to make simple things complex. So, you know, that, that's the next however many minutes that I spend with you. But then I began to read the words, the words of God that he gave to Isaiah for the Israelite people who were slaves in exile at this point. And listen to these words. He says in, in the very first one, listen, all of you who are thirsty, come here for water to drink. You may have no money, but come here and buy food to eat. Come and buy wine and milk. You do not need to pay any money. It is free. The two phrases that stuck out to me when I read that was all and it is free. Do you hear that? It's free. Free. Hmm. You know that drink that you had out there and if you had a donut, you know all that? It was free. Somebody paid a cost for it. There was a price paid. But for all of us who got to enjoy it, it was free. You know why? Because we love you. And we wanted to make sure you felt some of that love today. That as God has been filling our cups up, how can we show you that we care? Isaiah 55, God says, come, come to me. It's free. Hmm. See, he, he was talking to the exiled people at that point. But I happen to think he's talking to us today. Are you thirsty? Come to me. Come to me. It's free. And he continued on, and he said, do not spend money on anything that is not real food. Hmm. You work hard for your money, so do not spend it on things which do not help you. Sweet tea, soda. But he said, listen to me. Eat something that will make you strong. Enjoy the best food. Come to me and listen carefully. If you accept my teaching, you will have real life. Then I will make a covenant with you to be my people. My promise will continue forever like the promise that I made to King David. I could go off on a tangent here because I researched that a little bit, but we know that Jesus came from the line of King David in a nutshell. So he was pretty important, and some heavy-duty promises were made. 
And I believe that God is using Isaiah here, right here, to encourage the reader, which I've just made you all the reader this morning, to encourage you to ask yourselves, why am I doing the things that I'm doing? Why do I make those choices? Why, when faced with those two different things, do I go this direction? What is it that really satisfies us so that we're content with where we are at the moment? Listen, I get it. The moment might not be too pretty. The moment might be really hard. The moment might be really trying. But the moment might be really grand and spectacular. But are you content there? Or is there always that thirst for more? I read a devotion a while back, and I thought it really applied to making us think what's important in our life and what we do is important. And I'm just going to read it to you, so bear with me. It said, the ominous clouds burst, and rain poured down as I left to run errands. Normally, I would have dreaded getting in and out of the car, but not today. I was the proud owner of a better umbrella, the nifty reverse open umbrella that lets you open it and close it without getting wet. I couldn't wait to try my new toy. Driving down a busy street, heading for the mall, I stopped to allow a man pushing a shopping cart across the road. In the cart, a soaking, wet dog crouched beside a bag that appeared to hold all the man's worldly possessions. The man dashed across the street and found shelter under the awning at Walgreens. Anybody but me just picture Pinehurst and Spring Hill Drive? (coughs) When I read it, that's what I thought. I didn't need anything from the drugstore, but a nudge from Jesus sent me there. I sat in my car in the parking lot for a minute, resisting what I knew Jesus expected of me. Finally, I got out and handed the man my umbrella. I patted the dog, went inside, bought dog food, and got some cash. When I handed it all to the man, he thanked me and asked me, if he knew where he might find a job. As it turned out, our family hardware store was hiring. The rest of the day, I dashed in and out of the stores, getting thoroughly drenched, but it didn't matter. I wouldn't have been able to live with myself if I hadn't helped my fellow man. See, this really got me thinking and being honest with God about how much time I spend thinking about me. Those times when when I'm trying to make a decision, the me factor fits in, right? Instead of listening and waiting for God opportunities, I'm too busy rushing here and there. Just this Past Tuesday, as a matter of fact, I shared with the board a quote that I had read in another devotion. And it said, those who receive your love today will be much more interested in your faith tomorrow. And in other words, if you want to talk to them about God, you better act like God today. Ouch. Ouch. So, are you still not convinced that there's more to your life than what you want? When you want it, how you want it, why you want it? You know, we can justify just about anything, right? If we want it, there's justification to be had. Doesn't matter. But listen to some more of Isaiah. He says, so look. I chose David to show my power to other people. I made him a leader to rule the people of the nations. Now you will call other nations to come to you. They will be nations that you 
did not know before. Heard Luke 10, 2 in there. Nations that did not know you before will now quickly run to you. They will come to you because they see that you are great. The Lord your God, Israel's holy God, I will make people honor you. Come to serve the Lord now while he lets you find him. Call out to him for help while he is still near you. He's asking us, listen, I have great things for you. I am a great thing for you. Live who I am. I'm ready. Call to me. I'm right here. Wicked people need to change the way they live. Evil people must stop thinking their evil thoughts. They must turn back to the Lord our God because he will be kind to them. If you're waiting to get perfect, before you begin a relationship with Jesus, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I've been trying it for a lot of years. It hasn't happened. Finally, I'm like, well, I guess you get me the way I am. Thank you. Now you can make me who you want me to be, and I don't have to worry about who I want to be. Hmm. They must turn back to the Lord our God because he will be kind to them. Yes, God will completely forgive them if they turn back to him. So I wanted to try to give you an illustration, okay? This is where our object lesson comes in. And this is a, a picture of what might, it might look like to have God give you the opportunity I don't know what the opportunity is. Maybe the opportunity is to know him in the first place. Maybe the opportunity is to be filled with the spirit as he wants to fill you with the spirit. Maybe the opportunity is, hey, I've got a ministry for you. Hold your cup out. I don't know. God opportunity. So we take our cup. Oh, this is going to be good. God is going to fill me See, God met me. God came into my life. But there was no base to hold it, was there? That might be me saying, now I'm going to do it my own way. Thank you. That might be me saying, God, I hear you, but I got so much going on in my life right now. I don't have time for you. I don't have space for you. God, my life is such a mess. There is so much. You don't want anything to do with me. Hmm. See, that would mean we're a temporary creature just for the moment. But that's not who we are. We are God's eternal creatures. And our eternal life, it doesn't start when we die. I don't know if you realize that or not. That's not when our eternal life starts. It wouldn't be eternal then. Our eternal life starts when we know him. When we say, I've got my cup, fill it up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk with you. That's when our eternal life starts. The dictionary actually defines eternal as continuing without interruption, perpetual ongoing, right? Our eternal life began the day that we made the choice to become a child of God. A child of God by faith, not knowing what was ahead, not caring what was behind, but by faith in that one moment. And it continues without interruption. It continues without interruption. The interruptions of life I'm a realist. I believe life happens. And I'll just say it right now, I think sometimes it stinks. But you know, I go to him and I say, you know, God, life's stinking right now. I need some of you. I need you to remind me 
why I'm still here in this life. While I'm not already enjoying my eternal life in heaven with you. But too often we forget that our eternal life is right here. It started. You're already in it. Your eternal life has already started right here. But see, when, when we begin to worry about things we can't control, when we blow our problems out of proportion, you ever notice that? Yeah. I got a hangnail and my whole leg has got gangrene in it. <laughs> sort of how it feels, though, doesn't it, when you have a hangnail? And they hurt, right? We fail to trust an all-powerful God who's wise enough to handle anything that we're going through. He's got the answer for everything. Are we listening? Or are we listening for the answer that we want him to give us? I'm guilty of that. Here's how I want you to fix that, God. Can you please do that? That's not God. That's a genie. We got our, we got our minds confused about who he is, right? We are allow ourselves to be marred or tainted by anxiety or, or depression or sadness, worry, right? We stockpile our possessions because if we don't stockpile our, our possessions, who's going to be our provider? Oh. How'd you get those possessions in the first place? Now, God might not have set them down before you, but he gave you a job. He maybe gave you assistance in some other ways. He put churches around you that have food banks. He gave you neighbors who said, hey, I bought two of these. Can you use one of these? See, that's a lot different than just sitting there thinking, I don't have anything. I don't have nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going without right now. Well, have you asked God? Have you asked him? And have you waited to see how he might provide that. We can't go to people. We can't go to what makes us feel secure in this world instead of God for our security. Amen. People will let you down. Probably daily. It's unfortunate. We're working on it. Paul's prayer for the Ephesians in chapter 3 was for spiritual growth. And see, Paul, he was sure of the one who was able to complete the work that he talked about earlier. He said, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is, work, this, that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Immeasurably more. Say that with me. Immeasurably more. Anybody here not want immeasurably more? You're satisfied with where you're at? Hmm. That's who God wants us to be. That's what he wants us, wants to do for us. He wants us to envision that. Take a minute. What's your problem? God wants immeasurably more for you than your problem at the moment. But he wants you to ask for it. He wants you to say, I'm here. Fill my cup. Yet, too often, we treat God like he's this little, distant, weak, uninterested, stingy God. Oh, I can't ask him for that. It's too big for him to do. Did you know that you are serving a Niagara Falls kind of God? That when you ask him to fill your cup, you're not going to get a couple drops going to get it. It is going to overpower you when you ask him. So 
God's prayer is that we'll understand and live in that identity, our true identity. We are the people in whom Christ dwells. We are the ones he infinitely loves. We're the ones that his spirit empowers. Hmm. We exist to see lives empowered, transformed, and forever changed. Do we believe that? Hmm. We are immeasurably more loved than I think we'll ever realize this side of eternity. See, out of that empowered being, that's why this cup didn't work. Out of that empowered being flows our empowered doing. You don't have a base. You don't have anything. It's empty. It's hollow, right? It's a vessel. It's a vessel. Hmm. The one who lives in us, can't live in us, is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. Hmm. That's when we're able to see immeasurably more impact on what we're doing, the fruit of the kingdom in our lives. And this power, we can't do on our own. It's him living in us. Go back to Isaiah with me again. Even this is different, I guess, splitting it up. The Lord says, remember, my thoughts are not the same as your thoughts. The way that you do things is not the same as the way I do things. The sky is far higher than the earth. In the same way, I do things in a much better way than you do. Also, my thoughts are much higher than your thoughts. The rain and the snow come down from the sky, and they do not immediately return there. Instead, they give water to the earth so that the crops will grow there. Then the farmer has seeds to plant, and people have food to eat. It is the same when I give my word to people. It will not return to me without any result. No, my word does what I want it to do. What I promise to do will certainly happen. 1 Peter 1, 8 and 9 is one of God's promises. Listen, it says you love him, Jesus, even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him, and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. I would love nothing more than to have the physical presence of Jesus standing right here beside me. And I bet many of you were the same way. But it's our faith that says, There is one standing beside us. We don't need that physical presence. We know he's here. We can lay all of our issues aside. We can give them to God and accept the eternal joy that we have in Jesus. See, as a a child of God, you were made for joy. Not necessarily happiness. Joy. Joy is like, whatever. I've got Jesus. Whatever. I've got Jesus. Ah, That's a sidetrack. It's a distraction. It's an annoyance. It's a nuisance. But this is Jesus. And he is with me. And my choice to have a relationship with him what brings joy unspeakable. Not sure why that did that, but 
Sounds pretty good though, right? To have that kind of a joy, a kind of joy where we can be honest and say, God, life stinks right now, but thank you for giving me Jesus to walk with me. I don't like what's happening to me right now, but thank you for giving me Jesus. I didn't like what happened to him either. I'm sure glad it did so I can have eternal life. Hmm. Hmm. And our joy isn't just someday when we get to heaven, what a day that will be, right? No, that joy's here right now. Amen. Start Hallelujah. rejoicing right now. Amen. The second illustration. Everybody see that? Here's my cup. Fill it up, Lord. Whoops. Got to work it right. Fill it up. Oh. Uh, fill it. Fill. Fill it. Fill it. Fill it. Uh, that's good, Lord. That's good. I'll take that much. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. I got, I got room to grow. I'll grow later. I'll get used to what I got first. Hmm. Hmm. If I fill it too full, hmm. Hmm. Oh, if I fill it too full, it's hard to tell what's going to happen. What if, what if it's too full and it goes over? What will people think? I'm not able to control it. Hmm. Do you see how self comes right back into that? There we are. I'm going to control it. I'm going to control. I'm going to control. I'm going to control my cup, Lord. Hmm. 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 Maybe there's some fear in that. Maybe, hmm. What's it going to do to me, Lord? What's it going to look like? Ah. Oh. Hmm. But in order to have what God wants us to have, we've got to leave ourself behind. We can't have self-focus. It's got to completely, completely be on him. You need to carry your selfish heart. Like we heard in that last song, carry that selfish heart all the way to Calvary, lay it there. Here's my heart, Lord. I lay it before you. You do the work in me that you want to do. I know, I know, I'm not sure if I can handle it. Oh, but wait, you're God. You can handle it. You can give me what I need. I love verses 20 and 21. You might not get as much out of it as I did but God continued to speak through Isaiah, and he says, you will leave that foreign land with joy. You're going to leave that moment of exile. You're going to leave that bondage. You're going to leave it with joy. You will travel home with peace in your minds. The mountains and the hills will sing with joy as you travel past. The trees in the fields will clap their hands together. Where thorn bushes have been growing, Pine trees will grow instead. Myrtle bushes. I love crepe myrtles. <laughs> God sign way back years ago. They'll grow where there are weeds now. Those things will show everyone that the Lord is great. It will be a sign to people forever. See, it gets really easy for us on Sunday just to come in Breeze in, say hi, 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 go to your seat, listen, sing, hear, sing, leave. Okay, check that off. There's my experience with God for the week. Wow, you don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you're missing if that's it. Hmm. Some of us come in and we'll even exchange some small talk. Oh, how was your week? It was good, you know. Okay. Hmm. Some of us, some of us actually reach out and touch people. 
Hey, good to see you today. And those really, really, really bold ones, they'll come up and hug people. Hug people. Huh. And then if you're really top edge, you might actually go out to eat or invite someone over after church and extend that period of being with God's people before you part, go your way, until you come back the next Sunday. Hmm. Did you know that the community of believers is much more than a group of random people that come together for an hour or so on Sunday morning? It's true. The church is God's family. We are God's family. And how are the people around us going to know that? When we start living like it. When we start living like he is the God we serve, that we listen, that we follow, the people will know. One last powerful um, scriptures I finish. It's found in John 7, 37 and 38. It says, on the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When he said living waters, he was speaking of the Spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered his glory. I've got some great news for you. No, no. I've got some really exciting news for you this morning. Holy Spirit's here. Holy Spirit is here. See, Jesus has entered his glory, and he is preparing a place for us. He already sent his spirit to be with the people while he is absent from this earth. Here's my last example. This is, this is a cup Summer gave to all of our worship team. This is why you want to join the worship team. <laughs> Just kidding. You want to do it because God told you. I thought it was a good illustration for today. What we want as believers who are ready and willing to allow God in, to work in our lives, we want to hold our cups up. and We want to say, Lord, fill me up. Fill me up, Lord. Just fill me, fill me, fill me, fill me, fill me, fill me. Do the work that you need to do. Do the work. Do the work. Don't stop, Lord. Don't stop. Hmm. Are you willing? Are you willing to put what you want aside, what's holding you back, what you think wouldn't be proper, what you think that is the most crazy idea, Lord, but yet you say, I hear you. I don't know what it looks like, but your spirit living inside of me will help me not to care, not compare myself to anybody else, just listen for you. See, that's that kind of fool. That kind of fool is when we're willing to allow him to lead us out of our comfort zone that box that we build ourselves, build around ourselves. That's when we are willing to sacrifice our own time to comfort somebody else that needs something more than we do. Look around. Anybody sitting alone week after week after week? Do we have any elderly people who maybe need someone to take them places or or cook a meal? How about young parents who could use a free night out? In other words, they don't have to pay so that they can go out and strengthen their marriage 
and get some time alone. How about a study partner? Man, I don't have a clue how that lady got that out of Isaiah 55. How about we get together and we talk about this? How about you tell me what you saw? Or maybe it's a prayer partner. Remember those stinky times in life? Why are we going through them without the support of our brothers and sisters around us? Hey, would you pray with me? Hey, you know what? I, I really struggle with this. Would, would you be my accountability partner? Can I come to you when I want to do something that I know I shouldn't be doing? I think you might be getting it by now. There's enough opportunities there for you to be, oh, is that you, Lord? See, when God fills us up, it's not so that we can be full and satisfied. It's filled to the rim. There's no way I could pick this up and be able to drink this without it touching somebody else. It's not for us. This is what we get. And look, it even got fuller. This is what we get. We get us only so much. It's all I want. It's all I can handle. But we get this so that it can flow out of us onto others so that it, he can fill their cup up and flow out onto others so that they can fill their cup up and flow out onto others, right? Yeah. That cycle continues and continues. How long? <laughs> as long as we're here on earth, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. As long as God is saying, I've got people that I need to reach, will you be that one that holds your cup and let me give you everything you need to share my good news with everyone you know? If you want to be that person, then I would invite you, this is where your connect card comes in. There's a next step on there. I would invite you to allow God to fill your cup to full and overflowing with all of his eternal truths. He will not guide you wrong. He will not lead you to a place that he has not equipped you. I, I promise that. He promises that. So as the worship team starts to play, starts to sing, I would invite you to come. Bring your spiritual cups. Lift them up. If you want more of what God has for you, make that decision. If you're still not ready for this altar, this isn't, this isn't a magic place. It's just a public place but at least be honest enough with yourself. And then let us know on that Connect card. We'll contact you. Nobody ever has to know right now. We can, we can tell people later. We'll let God rejoice with you for a little bit. But as you come up here, I have a prayer that God gave me when I was, was preparing this sermon. And I'd like to pray it now, and if you can remember it, that's fine, and if not, find your own prayer with him. Lord, forgive us for downsizing our expectations to fit our reality and power instead of upsizing our prayers to fit your desires and ability. Stir our imagination, our faith, and our prayers to seek impact that brings more and more glory to you. Empower us at CCNAS to build your church through our lives. We welcome you here, and we long for you to receive glory in the church throughout all generations. Amen. Would you stand with us?
can keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, the Lord turn his face toward you. shine upon you, be gracious to you, the Lord turn his face toward you, and give you peace, amen, amen, amen. shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Close 
out the service. Everybody sing an amen. Eyes closed. Amen. 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 One more time. Amen. 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 Part of the planning uh, was that we were going to have a baptism, but uh, the baptismal is still broke, so it's only for the, the brave. If... Uh, uh, but we are, we will offer it. I would suggest if you're not prepared that we just sort of do it after everybody leaves and, uh, you know, those who want to stay can hang around. And if we do, we'll celebrate together. But if not, at least let us know that uh, you would like to be baptized, that you would, you would like to take that, that physical mark that uh, God has, has internally done a work on you. And we will, we will discuss that and plan, uh, better plan. But uh, I don't want to quench the spirit if someone is telling anyone. And so we will offer that afterward. But right now, um, as we, as Summer said, as we closed out that, that service with that, is there anything better to know that we are touching generation after generation after generation with the truth that, that Christ has for a better life for us. So as you go today, um, I would ask you first to hold out your hands um, because this is us, us receiving what God has for us. But I would, I would encourage you to go in peace, filled to overflowing with him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. His power is at work within you. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Um, the connect card on the back of your seat or the little QR code is, has made it easy. If you want to give that way, there are plates in the back on your way out. Go, full and overflowing. Amen. His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. And may his presence go before.